before I start, I just want to say that I am not a medical professional and this video is strictly my opinion found from the publicly available CDC website material. I used to practice as an LPN. I was an LPN for many years, a licensed practical nurse. And by my own choosing, I chose not to practice in the field of nursing anymore for many reasons. Again, this is strictly my opinion. Bringing you guys here to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention website, otherwise known as the CDC. I've recently done some research and thought I would share what I found with you guys. Um, it's talking here about how it spreads, and they're saying it's person to person and spread from contact with infected services or objects. So droplet precaution is what they're talking about here, which means from sputum or mucus from nose and mouth, um, when you cough or sneeze, the droplets, if they come into contact with another person's eyes, nose, mouth, you can get infected. And they also talk about how the virus can live on objects such as doorknobs, light switches, telephones. And if you touch that object with the droplet on it and then put your hand in your eye, nose, mouth, etc., that you can become infected. Uh, they say that some viruses are highly contagious like measles, but others are less so. They don't know yet. There's still more to be learned, they're saying. Uh, nowhere in here when it's titled how COVID-19 spreads does it say anything about the airborne specific transmission. However, same CDC website. Uh, this one um, is in the healthcare professional tab on the side. The title for this one is Interim Infection Prevention and Control Recommendations for Patients with Confirmed 2019 Novel Coronavirus and COVID or Persons Under Investigation in Healthcare Settings. Um, the part that I wanted to bring to your attention is if you scroll down, it talks about patient placement and where they should be placed once either suspected or been confirmed with the virus. Patient, or place a patient with known or suspected NCOV, i.e. PUI, which means person under investigation, in a AIIR that has been constructed and maintained in accordance with current guidelines. AIIRs are single patient rooms at a negative pressure relative to, sur to surrounding areas and with a minimum of six air changes per hour. So these are specially constructed rooms in hospitals that are set up for negative airflow as to not spread what people are breathing in and out into the rest of the hospital. If an AIIR is not available, patients who require hospitalization should be transferred as soon as feasible to a facility where this is available. So these are the people up here they're talking about that come in and for triage that maybe haven't been admitted to the hospital yet, but are suspected. Those people are supposed to be in negative pressure rooms. Then if they are admitted to the hospital, they need to be admitted to these special negative pressure rooms. If the patient does not require hospitalization, they can be discharged to home. Okay, well this is really concerning because if they come in and they're positive, they're supposed to be put in this AIR negative pressure room. But if their symptoms aren't to the point where they need to be hospitalized and monitored, then we can let them go. Okay, so that's just saying that we're going to keep spreading this disease when they're at home because obviously most people don't have negative pressurized air exchange in their homes, correct? Okay. So, the people entering the room, you need to use protective, um, I can't remember the acronym for this, but per, oh, personal protective equipment, including respiratory, respiratory protection as described below. When they talk about respirator, respiratory protection, they're talking about these respiratory um, N95 filtering face piece respirators. These have to be fitted before use to each 
person, the East healthcare provider, to assure that they're fit right. The filters are, you know, within guidelines, etc. This is not just a face mask. This is a special respirator. Okay. They talk about eye protection, and then they talk about aerosol generating procedures, aka a ventilator. So what they're not telling you is there's a very high percentage of folks that are diagnosed with the NCOV that develop something called ARDS, which is Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome is a secondary complication, if you want to say it. It's never caused on its own. It's never diagnosed on its own. It's usually caused from sepsis or severe pneumonia, but it's pretty much a respiratory shutdown of the entire body. Um, the lungs are unable to function because the tiny sacs, the alveoli in the lungs, aren't able to exchange the blood flow or the oxygen blood flow and they get so full that without a ventilator, there's almost no chance the person can survive. I think it's a 90 some percent the people that it's fatal to once they get this acute respiratory distress syndrome. If someone has the ARDS and they have the COVID, they would need to be ventilated if there was a negative pressure room and if there was a ventilator available. When you're putting forced air down someone's trachea, all those droplets in the trachea are obviously contaminated with the virus. When the ventilator is put into the patient, those droplets become an aerosol form. So you've got now a virus that is aerosol droplets in the air, which are, you know, minuscule droplets that can stay in the air longer because they're lighter and they can travel farther because they're lighter. Which, if you didn't have a pressurized room, negative pressure room, God knows what can happen. I'm wondering if this is why China built these separate hospitals. Are they all negative pressure rooms? We don't know. Is this why so many healthcare providers are being infected? Because once you put that ventilator in, it is such, such, such a high transmission rate because you've got now this droplet, contaminated droplet, broken up into millions of little aerosol pieces that is highly, highly contagious. So that's something that I just wanted to bring to your attention. I don't think there's any reports out showing what percentage of people that are infected with the virus get the ARDS. Although it sounds like in reading most of the material that the people that are dying, that's what they're dying from, if we can believe the reports. The last thing I wanted to bring your attention, which is the most shocking to me, is the testing. And again, we're still up at the CDC website and we're on the testing tab. So it says the CDC has developed a new laboratory test kit for using um, in testing patient specimens for several acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, the virus that causes COVID-19. The test kit's called the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Novel 2019 Novel Coronavirus Real-Time Reverse Transcriptase Diagnostic Panel. It's a very long name. Okay, so um, it's intended for use with upper and lower respiratory specimens collected from persons who meet the CDC criteria for the testing for this virus. Its test kit is intended for use by laboratories designed, or does, excuse me, laboratories designated by a CDC as qualified and in the United States certified under the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments to perform highly complex tests. Excuse me. <clears throat> the test kit also will be shipped to qualified international laboratories such as the WHO, Global Influenza Surveillance Response Team, and the test will not be available in U.S. hospitals or other primary care settings. Let me repeat. The test will not be available in US hospitals or other primary care settings. Okay, so here we are back at the CDC. 
and <clears throat> the next tab is reporting a PUI for COVID-19, which means person under investigation. Tips to successfully submit a PUI. CDC is working closely with state and local health departments around the country to support PUI specimen referral. At this time, the following steps should be taken. Healthcare providers who are concerned a patient may be a 2019 novel coronavirus PUI should contact their local or state health department immediately for consultation and guidance. Health departments who have been notified of a new PUI should contact CDC's Emergency Operations Center, then it has the number, for PUI notification prior to sending specimens or documentation to CDC. Once a PUI has been determined, the CDC will issue the health department a PUI identification number and further specific guidance and information necessary to ship specimens. Meanwhile, 3,000 more people are subjected to the virus. So then they have this fillable form, PDF or Word form, CDCs, I don't know, EOC will assist local and state health departments to collect, store and ship specimens appropriately during after hours or weekends. Oh, that's so nice of them. So I'm sure this is as shocking to you guys as it was to me and we need to make sure that we are aware of this. We need to make sure they know that we're aware of this and how absolutely absurd this is. Please help me in spreading this so that we can make the appropriate people aware and make a change so that these tests can get to our hospitals and primary care, care clinics. There is no chance for us if it's contagious and as lethal as it is that we will ever get a handle on it if this is the current procedure. Thank you for listening. Again, please share and God bless you all.